everyone. It is such a privilege and an honor to have you here today. My name is Maria Maundu and I am your host for the service today. Whether you're watching us on YouTube or Facebook or ICCM Live or on Raya TV, it is a privilege to have you here. We're going to have a time of worship through music, then we'll pray and then we'll go on to sing our declaration song before we give of our offering and then hear the word this morning i pray that it will minister to you greatly allow me to pray even as we begin the service heavenly father we are grateful for allowing us to be able to come into your presence today i pray heavenly father as the word comes to us this morning that it will minister to us that it will cause it to be change and transformation even as we allow judah to go first today and we have prayed all this in jesus name amen Enjoy the service.
sababu mtakatifu umejawa na utukufu umejawa na sifa hakuna kama wewe
You know, when we sang that song, we asked the Lord that we may never go back to the things that we used to indulge in. And here's the thing, friends. Um, the Bible says in John 8, verse 44, that you are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. Now, I believe that we are not of the devil. And the father, our father, is not the devil, but our father is God. But here's the thing. The devil has created a kingdom for himself. He rules and reigns and has desired and has pursued taking dominion by building lies, speaking lies into our lives, speaking lies into circumstances and whatnot, and turning us away from the truth. And that truth is our father and the word that is written in the Bible. And that truth is the word that he gives to us that we are able to know what way it, it is that we ought to live and this morning I just want us to look at uh, just a few a few facts here with regards to what a lie is and I found that a lie is an assertion that is believed to be false and they are said to serve a variety of instrumental interpersonal and psychological functions by those who use them now, what kind of lies are we talking about? We're talking about white lies. You know, they look very harmless, but they are a lie, a red lie, things that we say out of spite, uh, you know, just to be able to, 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 to show just how angry you are, a polite lie. You know those things you say just to get out of a commitment? Oh, no, I'm going to be busy. Other than you just saying, I don't want to go there or I don't want to do this. There's the noble lie, which is often told to maintain law and order or come, you know, the flight is going down and the flight attendant stands and says uh just stay calm everyone keep calm everyone everything is under control and yet it is not and there's minimization or exaggeration which is the opposite of the same this is the lies we tell our children what is sex and you go on and you tell your child that uh it is a game between two children and often such lies become misconceptions because when people hear our children speak them they wonder what truth there is in that and sometimes it builds distrust between our children and our ourselves there's half truths and there's a fake news that is constantly being plastered in the media for us there's defamation i mean we use that don't we when we have a business and someone else is running the same business and we talk about how shoddy their business is or their product is not as good because of this and that and and whatnot you know there's the blue lies blue lies are often told by police service when they're covering up for other policemen or faults that they have done, you know? And then there's a black lie, which is often told to increase benefit to ourselves, whatever kind of lie it is, it is a lie. And unfortunately, even the scripture points to us lying, even in the household of faith. Where Jeremiah is saying, doom is coming, and false prophets are saying, no, let's rejoice, everything is going to be just fine. And it's not fine because we end up deceiving God's children. We, as God's children, end up being deceived, and that's the devil's scheme. And this morning, King of glory, I pray that you will forgive us for every time that we have indulged in telling lies, be it the small lies or the big lies, the white lies or the black lies, whatever kind of lies for speaking the devil's language because he is not our father and I refute for us my lord and my king as individuals as a society as business owners king of glory in allowing our souls to partake in corruptors because those are lies king of glory I pray heavenly father that you will forgive us 
I pray that you will not only forgive us, but you will teach us to speak your truth, to walk in the truth of who you are, in the truth of what your word is, King of glory. And Heavenly Father, I pray that you will begin to speak your truth into our lives that we may be able to tear down the lies. And Lord, I know that the only way the enemy holds us back is by building walls of lies around us so that we're not able to accomplish the things that you have called us to. And so I pray, King of glory, you are God who rules and reigns, that you will tear down those walls in the mighty name of Jesus, that we may know you and love you and walk with you and in accordance to your ways and in your will over our lives for the glory and honor of your holy name. And we have prayed all this in Jesus' name. Let's go ahead, put on your dancing shoes, and let's make this declaration that our God is great.
an awesome uh, God is. Now, here are the announcements for today. Uh, we are announcing the wedding bands of Zila Wacharo Moka and Lewis Kamanga Gaderu. The wedding will be happening on the 7th of August 2021, as well as Cynthia Mumbwa Maingi and Samuel Mbogo Ireri. Happening on the same day, right here in the city of Mombasa. If you have anything against these two being put together, please go ahead and come and see Pastor Edward Bonene for the same. Also, we are still reminding you and asking you to please go ahead and plant a tree, not just for us, but for the generations to come. But most importantly, reach out to someone, Jitume. Speaking on the same lines, as we have said, Jitume, welcome to another time of worship through our giving. The Bible says that if we give, it will return to us uh, in good measure. Press down, shaking together, and running over. I encourage you to go ahead and give um, of your offering. And let's trust God, not uh, for our earthly treasures, but he is a God who's faithful enough to reward us for giving and just bless us greatly. The details are here for you. Alice, take it away. We would like to invite you and give you the opportunity to worship the Lord with your giving. All of the details on how you can give are on your screen right now. There are several ways in which you can give here at ICC Mombasa. If you are giving through M-Pesa, our pay bill number is 488-508. I will repeat that, 488-508. For account, you write offering or tithe or special offering or whatever it is that you are giving towards. You can also give through our equity bank till, and the till number is 488508. If you would like to give through PayPal, Sendwave, Wildremit, Simba, or any other app that you can use, the details are also on your screen right now. Our bank account number is 100,000 and our account is domiciled at NCBA Bank. Our SWIFT code is on your screen and our PayPal email address is info at iccmombasa.org. Info at iccmombasa.org. Thank you so much for your giving to the work of the Lord. God bless you. Hello, God's people. It's my joy and pleasure once again to be the one to share with us and to partake together with you from the Word of God. Uh, we are glad and we believe that so far in the service you are getting blessed. And uh, we are grateful that you could join us, that you have joined us today at this moment and at this time. And uh, we are saying thank you on this third Sunday of July. We, I just want to start by asking you if you are watching us through YouTube uh, that you may go ahead and subscribe if you have not subscribed and if you are on Facebook it's a good time now to like our page and follow our page and also I would encourage you and ask you also request you to you know send a text call a friend invite them into this service so that they can watch us uh, they can join us on those social media pages or even through raya tv if you're watching from kenya and so on this third uh, third sunday of the month of july we are declaring that judah shall go first this is our declaration uh, in this second half of the year of 2021 judah shall go first you know god told the children of israel as they were wandering in the book of judges chapter one uh, from verse one they were wondering and asking who will go ahead who will go first to go and conquer the land of the canaanites you know to take over or rather to continue in the battle and this is what the Lord spoke to them, you know, because they needed to continue uh, moving forward. And so they were careful to ask the Lord and inquire uh, from God. And God answered them that Judah shall go 
fast. And this is the title of our series this month, uh, that Judah shall go fast. We know that Judah means praise. Praise shall go fast or praise uh, shall go up. You know, many, uh, many a times we find ourselves in the valley of decision, you know, looking ahead and we have no idea how uh, to face the unknown and the troubles that we see uh, that are coming in our ways. And so it is very easy for us, you know, to take the easy way out. But you know, as a church, we are saying, Judah shall go first. Or in another version, which is a very beautiful translation, it says, Judah shall go up. Judah shall go up. And therefore, uh, we need to lift up praises to God instead of being anxious, instead of getting worried, instead of fretting, instead of getting worked up, uh, getting, you know, uh, depressed or getting entangled or bogged down by the situations in life. We need to focus on the Lord and just let him be our God and King. You know, we all go through difficult situations at one point or the other in life. We go through adversities and so we live, you know, we live in very desperate times. Even especially, particularly now, these days that we are living in, they are very challenging, they are desperate, you know. We hear stories, uh, difficulties in parenting, uh, stories of uh, child kidnappings and abductions, you know. And you wonder, uh, if you are a parent, sometimes you begin to wonder our children safe. You know, in our days it never used to be like this, you know. We live at a time also when diseases um, have taken a different turn. It has become so worrying. And they seem to be escalating, you know. Uh, cancer has become more prevalent, more common, you know. COVID has become persistent with different variants, you know, just mutating and changing and taking a different uh, co co cause, you know. We have conflicts also that are putting a strain in our relationships, you know, and, uh, and, and some, some obligations and responsibilities, they cause us to be worn out, you know? So challenges and adversities, sometimes those challenges and adversities are small. It could be a headache, it could be an inconvenient cold, it could be a work of frustration, or just a bad day in the kids. Other times the challenges and troubles, uh, they seem to multiply and to become giants. We suffer the loss of we can, we suffer the loss of a family member, a loved one, a dear one, you know. And yet you have prayed, you have prayed, you have fasted, but they don't survive. Or you find uh, it could be a terminal illness or a disease or a rebellious child, a financial hardship and difficulty, and so forth. You know, there's. Desperate situations. We are in desperate situations right now, and you wonder and you ask yourself, what is going on in life? What is on my plate? You know? And so I will ask you the same question What is going on in your life? What is on your plate? And what do you do when you are faced with these things? Now, in the Bible, in the book of Ruth, chapter 1, we see Naomi and Elimelech who are faced with a famine and they decide to leave their home, Bethlehem, Bethlehem in Judah, and they move to the land of Moab. And uh, that is where they, uh, that is where they, they sought to go and beat the famine. They took uh, themselves to, to a land of Moab. And so after leaving, when you read the book of Ruth, chapter 1, from verse 1 to 5, uh, we see after leaving home, Elimelech dies. And then his sons, two sons also die. Because the whole family left together. Elimelech, his two sons, and his wife Naomi. And Naomi and Elimelech dies. And while they were there, by the way, the two sons got married, and then 
Elimelech dies, the two sons also who are already married, they die there. And so Naomi is left with two daughters-in-law. And looking at verse number 20 of Ruth chapter 1, of the same chapter, you know, coming back, after coming back to, to Bethlehem, Judah, Naomi says to the people, do not call me Naomi anymore. Should not be called Naomi. Because Naomi uh, means pleasant. She doesn't want to be called pleasant anymore. She says, call me Mara. And Mara means bitterness. Because of the troubles, because of the hardships, because of the difficulties and the losses she has endured in Moab. And so we want to look at this story, you know, because Naomi is in pain. She is in pain and bitter. But I allow us today to share from this story and look at it figuratively. This is where the problem began for Naomi and Elimelech. As we are looking at it, I'm saying figuratively, there was a famine. And so rather than them seeking God and, you know, getting to find out God's will, they decide, this is Naomi and Elimelech now, they decide to do things their way. They left Judah. They left the land and region of praise. Remember, Judah means praise. And so they left that land of praise. And where do they go? They decided to go to the land of Moab. Moab, remember, these are the descendants of Lot. When the daughters of Lot uh, slept with their father, they raped him, you know, because they made him drunk and slept with him. The first daughter gave birth to a child, and this is what they called him, Moab, which means son from my father. And so this represents the work of human effort. This is what Moab represents, the work of the flesh, you know, he's an offspring of the work of the flesh. And this is what we, 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 we try to do, uh, what we, we, we can get for ourselves. So Elimelech and Naomi walk away from the land of praise, from Judah, which means praise, and they leave behind what God could do for them, and they go after to fend for themselves. They go after the work of the flesh, you know, which leads to sin and sin which leads to death. And so Naomi is bitter. She is very bitter. But it is because the land of the works of the flesh and human effort have nothing. It has nothing but bitterness. It has nothing but bitterness and death and pain and struggle. This is what you find in the land of human effort. Fleshly works. This is what you find in that land. And this is what Naomi uh, found and experienced. She took the wrong road, headed in the wrong direc direction, because she took the road from Judah to Moab. Instead, we are to take the road from Moab to Judah. You know, from the land of self, uh, self-fulfillment, or rather our, our own fleshly and human effort, and to transition now into the land of praise. And so you and I are supposed to dwell in the land of praise. When things are painful, when things are difficult, you know, when it gets at a place where there are challenges, you are being depressed, where there is depression and discouragement and despair, we are to move from that land into the land of praise. Into the land of praise. You see? And so Naomi and Elimelech took the road from Judah to Moab. They lost everything. But here is one person. Her name is Ruth. She took the road from Moab to Judah. And I think you know the ending of that story uh, of, of Ruth. You know, even the book itself is named after her. So she took the direction from pagan worship to the praise of the true God of heaven. And her life and her destiny was changed completely. And so at this stage, 
I want to allow us to say this. We need to say this and believe this statement. We have to live a life of praise and not live our praise trying to make a life. Let me repeat that again. We have to live a life of praise and not live, that is to forsake our praise trying to make a life. And so please hear me today. Do not leave the land of praise, you know, to go to the land of the works of the flesh, where you try to fight and live by your own effort. Because it cannot be. The work of the flesh and human action can only breed pain and defeat and death. But living in praise, living a life of praise, exalting God, hallelujah, even in the most difficult times, it will bring you victory. God's favor and life, you know, rests on your praise. And so, something that interesting also that we need to realize is that looking at that word, that name, Bethlehem. You know, Bethlehem means land of bread, you know, or house of bread. Bethlehem means house of bread. That means there is food in Bethlehem. It is the house of food. And so if you stay in Judah, hallelujah, you will enjoy the life or living the life of bread and sufficiency. You will enjoy the provision of God. Remember, Jesus came that you may have and have it. You may have life and have it abundantly. He says this in John 10.10, 10, where he spoke and began by saying, The thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy, but I am come that you may have life and have it abundantly. And so it is a great thing. It is a great thing for us uh, to, to see and to read this scripture. And it is a great thing for us now to live a life of praise. It is required. Let us forsake Moab. Let us leave behind pain and bitterness and let us move towards praise. Whatever the circumstances that you are facing, let us go. I urge us today, church, I urge you, my brother and sister uh, who is watching, I encourage you to leave, uh, to leave behind uh, bitterness and to begin to live a life of praise. Do not forsake the land of praise. Do not leave it behind. Do not leave it behind. You know, because Moab, Moab brings death, Moab brings bitterness, you know. And so let us not live a life uh, of bitterness. We need to stop trying to make a life for ourselves and live a life of praise unto God. As we had said earlier, we have to live a life of praise and not live our praise trying to make a life. And so from this, uh, looking at the scripture in the book of Ruth from verse 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 1 to 5, we have some two key lessons here for us, which I want to very quickly go through. The first lesson is we have to decide to stay in the land of praise. We have to decide to stay in the land of praise. In Psalms chapter 34, verse 1 to 3, we see that David's uh, first response and, and, and uh, to adversity and difficulty is to say, I will praise. Let us read from verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Verse 2, my soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Verse 3, oh magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. Magnify the Lord. David, when he was faced with adversity, he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. You know, when you read through the life of David and you study the Psalms, it is evident 
that David had decided to praise the Lord no matter what came his way, no matter the difficulties, no matter the challenges, no matter the lions and the bears that he was going to encounter. David decided that he was going to praise the Lord. And so church, for us also, Judah shall go first. Judah shall go up. For praise does not stop in the hard times or challenges. Whatever it is, uh, praise must go up. We do not leave the land of praise because of famine. We do not walk away because things have not gone our way. We will continually praise the Lord. We will bless the Lord our, at all times. And our praise will always be there. Even when times get tough, his praises shall continually be in our mouth. David made the decision. He resolved to praise the Lord and continued to praise the Lord no matter the adversities that he was facing. Therefore, Judah, going fast, in the, even in the face of pain and adversity, this gives us uh, power. This is the most powerful lesson of our generation today, that we need not to respond to the adversities and difficulties, you know, in discouragement, in getting low, in getting depressed, but we will praise his praises will continually be in our mouth. Let your mouth praise the Lord. Let your mouth lift the Lord. And so my question to you is, when do the praises stop in your life? When friends fail, when they leave you, when do you stop praising the Lord? When the people you work with are frustrating you, things are getting bad at work, when relationships are difficult, when you are under financial pressure, tell me. When should our praise stop? You know, our praise should not stop at any moment. As I have encouraged you earlier, that our praise needs to go up at all times. But we do find ourselves as human beings getting discouraged and forgetting to praise the Lord. But let us follow the example of David who praised the Lord at all times. Our God is good and his goodness can surely outlast any bad and every bad circumstance. So praise him. Our God is loving and he loves us and he cares for us. So let us praise him and pour our praise for him. There is no circumstance that is so low in life where we cannot still lift our voices in praise to our God. So our resolve should be with David to bless the Lord at all times, continually praising him. And so we have to live a life of praise and not live our praise trying to make a life. The second lesson is we have to determine to live a life of praise. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 23 says, and whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. So whatever you do, do it for the Lord. Do it for his praise. Do it for his glory. Do it, whatever it is, in traffic, in tough situations, in traffic when you are being delayed uh, and you are being tempted to go fast or to cut corners, to overlap. Praise the Lord. Lift your praise. Judah shall go fast. You know, Elimelech and Naomi did not live a life of praise. And we see uh, Naomi calling herself, changing her name to bitterness. But let us lift our praise unto God. Let us not complain like Naomi did, but let us continue to praise the Lord. Let us be like Ruth, who took the, the journey from the land uh, of death from Moab into, into Judah into judah so that she may pray so that she may follow she said your god shall be my god she did not allow the situations and the bitterness uh, to derail her instead she followed and she sought to follow the lord god almighty the god of israel and therefore let us live a life of praise unto this god in the same manner that ruth uh, chose to to do what to exalt and honor the Lord by making her, by making him her God, her Lord 
and Savior. So let us determine to live with a determination that will praise the Lord. You know, don't leave the land of Judah, but instead you determine to stay there in that land, praising the Lord, lifting the Lord, honoring the Lord, doing that which will praise Him with your abilities and talents and everything. Don't use your mouth to tell lies, to gossip or to curse, but instead use it to bless the Lord. Meditate in your heart on His word and give the Lord praise. Remember, Naomi means pleasant, which is pleasing to God. And so you are supposed to please the Lord. You are supposed to please the Lord. Be a delight. Delight in the Lord. And by the way, in the book of Psalms also, it says delight in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. It is in delighting, not in complaining, not in murmuring. Don't be frustrated. Don't be put down by the situations that you face, but delight in the Lord. And like Mary who broke the alabaster jar and poured out, you know, her worship unto the Lord. Do the same. Let us love the Lord. Let us love him, the one who gave himself for us. Let us remember and let us not hold back. Let us not draw back, but let us lay our lives on his altar and let everything, every fiber in our bodies, every tissue and every cell in us to honor him, the one who created us, the one who paid the penalty for our sins, our redeemer, our rock, our God. And so friend, I end it there with you. Those two lessons. And I remind us again of this statement. We have to live a life of praise and not live our praise trying to make a life. We have to live a life of praise and not live our praise trying to make a life. Let us decide. I am decided let us be decided and be determined that we will live in the land of praise, making praise unto our God. And so let us move from Moab and let us get into Judah and not trade, and not trade that life for anything. And so may the Lord bless you. May he fill your mouth with praises today and may he lift you. And as you praise him, May he continually fill you with joy, the joy of life, the joy of praising him, the joy of knowing that he is right there occupying those praises for they are fragrant unto him. And so may the Lord bless you and use you mightily. Till next time, God be with you. Amen.